There's a moment in life, maybe you felt it too. It comes when everything you thought you knew begins to crumble. The plans you had, the dreams you were so sure of, suddenly seem distant, almost irrelevant. You find yourself standing in the middle of this vast, unfamiliar space completely lost. It feels like the ground has been pulled out from under your feet, and you're floating in this strange limbo. You're not sure where to go or what to do next. You feel abandoned, confused, maybe even a little scared. And here's the kicker you start wondering, did I make the wrong decisions? Did I take the wrong path? But what if I told you that this feeling of this deep, unsettling discomfort is a sign that you're exactly where you're supposed to be? What if being lost is part of the journey, a necessary part of growth? We're going to explore that today. And by the end of our time together, I want you to walk away with a new understanding, a deeper insight into your life's path, and a sense of peace that even in the uncertainty, you're moving in the right direction. When we feel lost, it's natural to panic. We search frantically for signs, for anything that can tell us we're on the right track. But the irony is, it's often this very act of searching that prevents us from seeing the truth. You see, true growth and real transformation happens when we stop clinging to the idea that we need to know exactly where we're going. When we release the need for certainty, we open ourselves to something much deeper. We begin to experience life not as a series of planned events, but as a flow, a journey that unfolds moment by moment. Click subscribe to this channel to get more profound spiritual lesson. Now, let me ask you this when you're standing at the edge of the unknown. Do you feel resistance? Do you feel fear? That resistance is a powerful sign. It's telling you that you're touching the edge of your comfort zone. And here's the uncomfortable truth. Growth never happens inside your comfort zone. It's when you step into the unknown, when you embrace the discomfort, that you truly begin to evolve. Think about it. When was the last time you grew as a person when everything was easy? When was the last time you discovered something new about yourself when life was predictable and comfortable? We rarely learn in moments of ease. It's in the challenges, in the discomfort, that we're forced to dig deep to find out what we're really made of. Let's talk about that discomfort for a moment. It's like the universe's way of saying, hey, you're ready for something more. But instead of seeing it as a sign that you're off track, what if you saw it as a sacred invitation? What if every challenge, every moment of uncertainty was actually an opportunity for you to learn something profound about yourself? You see, when we feel lost, the natural tendency is to want to control and grasp at anything that feels familiar, anything that might bring us back to a place of certainty. But control is an illusion. The more we try to control, the more we resist the natural flow of life. And it's in that resistance that we miss the lessons. So here's a question for you, what would happen if you stopped resisting? What would happen if you allowed yourself to just be lost for a while, to sit with discomfort, to embrace uncertainty? You might discover that the very things you've been running from those feelings of fear, of doubt, of loneliness are the things that are trying to teach you the most. They're like mirrors, reflecting back to you the parts of yourself that you need to heal, the parts that are ready to grow. And here's where it gets interesting. When you stop resisting, when you allow yourself to fully experience what it means to be lost, something magical happens. You begin to notice things you didn't see before. You start to hear that inner voice, the one that's always been there, softly guiding you, 
but was drowned out by the noise of your fear and need for control. There's something profoundly powerful about solitude. When you're alone, truly alone, without distractions, you're forced to confront yourself. And let's be honest, that's not always easy. It's in those quiet moments that all your fears, your doubts, your insecurities rise to the surface. But this is where the real work begins. You see, we live in a world that's constantly pulling our attention outward. We're bombarded with messages telling us how we should live, what we should strive for, how we should feel. But the truth is, the answers you're searching for aren't out there. They've never been out there. They're within you, buried deep beneath the layers of noise and distraction. This is where solitude becomes your greatest teacher. When you strip away the distractions, when you allow yourself to sit in the silence, you begin to hear that inner voice. And that voice? That's your truth. That's the part of you that knows exactly where you're meant to go, even if you feel lost right now. But here's the challenge listening to that voice means letting go of everything you thought you knew. It means releasing the need for external validation for approval from others. It means trusting yourself, even when the path ahead is unclear. So let me ask you, are you willing to trust yourself, even when the road ahead is dark? Are you willing to listen to that inner voice, even when it contradicts everything the world is telling you? This is where your true power lies not in knowing the path, but in trusting yourself enough to walk it, even when you can't see the way forward. It's ironic, isn't it? The times when we feel the most alone, the most abandoned, are often the times when we're closest to our truth. It's as if the universe strips away everything that's familiar, everything that's comfortable, so that we have no choice but to look within. And in that looking, we find something incredible. We find that we're not truly alone. We never have been. The strength you're searching for, the guidance you're longing for, it's already within you. It always has been. But sometimes we need to be brought to our knees. We need to be stripped of all the external comforts and distractions so that we can finally see what's been there all along. And that's not an easy process. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. It feels like abandonment. But it's in that space of solitude, in that space of feeling lost, that you truly find yourself. So the next time you feel lost, the next time you feel abandoned or alone, remember this, you're not off track. You haven't made a wrong turn. In fact, you're exactly where you need to be. You're on the path of growth, and that path is rarely comfortable. But it's in the discomfort that you find your strength. It's in the discomfort that you discover who you really are. Let's pause for a moment. Take a deep breath. I want you to really feel this. Everything you're going through right now, the struggles, the challenges, the discomfort, it's all preparing you for something greater. You may not see it now, but these moments of feeling lost are shaping you into the person you need to become for the next phase of your journey. They're refining you, strengthening you, preparing you for what's to come. So let me ask you, are you willing to trust the process? Are you willing to believe that even in the moments of greatest discomfort, you're exactly where you need to be? When we're in the thick of it, the confusion, the doubt, the isolation, it's hard to imagine that there's a greater purpose to it all. We often say things like, why is this happening to me? Or I just don't understand why life has to be this hard. But what if the very struggles you're facing are not obstacles, 
but stepping stones. What if these dark moments are carving out space in your soul for something brighter, something more profound than you could ever imagine? I want you to think back to a time in your life when you went through something difficult. Maybe it was a breakup, the loss of a job, or even a period of deep insecurity. At the time, it probably felt like the world was falling apart. But now that you're on the other side of it, can you see how it shaped you? Can you see how it made you stronger, more resilient, more compassionate? That's the thing about life's dark moments. They don't just test you, they transform you. But here's a question for you. What if you could trust the process while you're still in the darkness? What if, instead of resisting the pain, you could lean into it, knowing that it's leading you somewhere? I know that sounds counterintuitive, and trust me, I've been there too. But the more you resist, the more you suffer. The more you try to control the outcome, the further you drift from the lesson that life is trying to teach you. When you're in the midst of a storm, it's hard to see anything beyond the rain. But storms always pass. And when they do, the air is cleaner, the sky is brighter, and the earth feels more alive. The same is true for you. The storms in your life are not here to drown you, they're here to cleanse you, to wash away everything that no longer serves you, to prepare you for what's coming next. Now, I know what you might be thinking, but I don't see how this struggle is leading me anywhere good, and that's okay. You don't have to see it right now. In fact, you won't always understand the purpose of your struggles while you're still in them. That clarity often comes later, sometimes much later. But that doesn't mean the purpose isn't there. This brings us to the idea of surrender. And no, I don't mean giving up. Surrendering doesn't mean you stop trying or that you let life roll over you. Far from it. Surrendering means letting go of the need to control every outcome. It means releasing the illusion that you have to have it all figured out right now. Think about a river. It doesn't resist the flow. It doesn't try to control the rocks, the bends, or the currents. It simply flows, trusting that it's moving in the right direction, even if it doesn't know exactly where it's going. That's the kind of surrender I'm talking about. It's a deep, inner knowing that even though you can't see the destination, you're being carried to exactly where you need to be. But here's the catch, surrender takes courage. It's much easier to cling to what's familiar, to try to force things to happen the way you think they should. But in doing that, you limit yourself. You close yourself off to the infinite possibilities that life has in store for you. So, let me ask you, are you willing to let go? Are you willing to trust that even though you can't see the whole picture, life is guiding you, moment by moment, toward your highest good? When we fight against the flow, we create friction. We make life harder than it needs to be. But when we surrender, when we allow ourselves to be carried by the current, we move with grace. That doesn't mean the journey will always be easy, but it will be purposeful. Now, let's talk about the darkness itself. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it feels like you're walking through a tunnel and you can't see the light at the end. But here's the thing, the darkness is where the real transformation happens. It's in the dark that seeds grow, that caterpillars become butterflies, that the most profound changes take place. In spiritual terms, the darkness is often referred to as the void, it's that space between what was and what will be. And as uncomfortable as it is, the void is a sacred space. It's where you shed the old versions of yourself, the ones that no longer serve you and make room for the new.
But here's the tricky part. We often resist the void because it feels like nothing is happening. We're so used to being in constant motion, constantly doing, that when we're asked to simply be, it feels wrong. But just because you can't see the growth doesn't mean it's not happening. Think about a tree in winter. On the surface, it looks dead. The leaves are gone, the branches are bare, but beneath the surface, the roots are growing deeper. The tree is gathering strength, preparing for the spring when it will burst back to life. The same is true for you. Just because you can't see the growth doesn't mean it's not happening. In fact, the most profound growth often happens in the quiet, in the stillness, in the darkness. So, the next time you find yourself in that uncomfortable, in-between space, ask yourself, what am I being prepared for? What is this darkness trying to teach me? And most importantly, can I trust that even though I can't see the light right now, it's there, waiting for me on the other side? There's a deep wisdom in uncertainty, but it's one we're often too afraid to embrace. We're taught to have a plan to know what's coming next, but life doesn't always work that way. Sometimes the most profound experiences come when we let go of the need for certainty and embrace the mystery of the unknown. Uncertainty is not something to fear. It's a guide. It shows us where we're still holding on too tightly where we're afraid to let go. And it's in those moments of uncertainty that we're invited to stretch beyond our current limitations, to step into a new version of ourselves. So here's another question for you. What if you stopped fearing the unknown? What if, instead of seeing it as something to avoid, you saw it as an invitation, an invitation to explore, to grow, to discover parts of yourself that you didn't even know existed? When we embrace uncertainty, we open ourselves to the magic of life. We allow ourselves to be surprised, to be led in directions we never could have imagined. And often, it's in those unexpected moments that we find the greatest treasures. But embracing uncertainty doesn't mean you stop caring about your life or your future. It means you stop trying to force things to happen in a certain way. It means you trust that life has a plan for you, even if you can't see it right now. There's a reason why so many spiritual traditions speak of the dark night of the soul. It's because the darkest moments often precede the most profound awakenings. It's in the moments when we feel most lost, most alone, most confused, that we're on the verge of something incredible. Think about it, the night is always darkest just before dawn. And the same is true for your life. When you're in the thick of it, when you feel like you can't take one more step, that's often when the breakthrough is just around the corner. But here's the thing you have to keep walking. You have to trust that even though you can't see the light yet, it's there. You have to trust that the struggles you're facing right now are not in vain. They're shaping you, refining you, preparing you for the next phase of your journey. And let me tell you, that next phase, it's going to be brighter than you can imagine, but you have to be willing to walk through the darkness first. So here's my final question for you in this part. Are you willing to trust the darkness? Are you willing to believe that even in your most challenging moments, you're being guided toward the light? There's something deeply powerful about faith, not the kind of faith that depends on everything going right, but the kind that endures even when everything seems to be going wrong. The kind of faith that says, I may not understand what's happening right now, but I trust that it's all part of a greater plan. This is the faith we're talking about. The unshakable faith that allows you to keep walking, even when the path ahead is dark, 
even when every step feels like it's taking you further into the unknown. But let's be real, this kind of faith isn't easy. It's hard to believe that there's a purpose to your struggles when you're in the middle of them. It's hard to trust that everything is unfolding exactly as it should when nothing seems to make sense. But here's the truth, faith isn't about having all the answers. It's about trusting the process, even when the answers haven't revealed themselves yet. So let me ask you, do you have the faith to keep going, even when you can't see the way forward? Can you trust that every step you take, even the hard ones, is leading you somewhere important, somewhere you're meant to be? We often think of faith as the opposite of fear, but that's not entirely true. Faith and fear can coexist. In fact, it's in the moments when fear is present that faith is most needed. Faith isn't about eliminating fear, it's about choosing to move forward, even when fear is whispering in your ear, telling you to turn back. Think about the most courageous people you know. Do you think they lived without fear? Of course not. They felt the fear, but they didn't let it stop them. They moved forward anyway. That's what true faith looks like. It's not the absence of fear, it's the willingness to keep walking, even when fear is telling you to run. The next time you feel afraid, afraid of failing, afraid of making the wrong decision, afraid of the unknown, pause for a moment. Acknowledge the fear, but don't let it control you. Instead, ask yourself, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? What steps would I take if I trusted that everything was happening for my highest good then? Take those steps. Even if they're small, even if they feel uncertain, take them. Because every step forward, no matter how small, is a step toward your awakening. Here's another truth, growth is often uncomfortable. It's messy, it's painful, but it's also necessary. Just like a seed has to break apart to become a tree, we too have to go through periods of breaking down before we can grow into the fullest versions of ourselves. But in those moments of breaking, it's easy to want to give up. It's easy to think, this is too hard. I can't do this anymore and I get it. I've been there too. But here's the thing, the moment you feel like giving up is often the moment right before the breakthrough. It's the moment when everything inside you is being tested, when your faith, your strength, and your resilience are being pushed to their limits. But what if you didn't give up? What if instead of turning back, you kept walking? What if you trusted that even though it hurts right now, this pain is leading you somewhere important? You see, every step you take, even the painful ones, is moving you closer to your awakening. And I know it doesn't always feel that way. I know it can feel like you're stuck, like you're walking in circles, like you're not making any progress. But trust me, you are. Every time you choose to keep going, despite the pain, Despite the fear, despite the doubt, you're building something inside yourself. You're building resilience. You're building strength. You're building the kind of faith that can't be shaken, no matter how dark the road ahead may seem. 